And I saw the guy today on TV. They say they have one, but they have to test it. Start now. Maria's here. Good morning, and welcome to the Charlie County Planning Commission meeting for March 11th, 2020. And we'll start at this time with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Roll call, please. Here. Here. Okay, at this time we'll have a public comment. Uh, members of public may, may comment on any item not appearing on the agenda. Under state laws, matters presented under this item cannot be discussed or acted upon by the Planning Commission at this time. For items appearing on the agenda, the public will be invited to make comments at the time the item comes up for Planning Commission consideration. So that all interested parties may have an opportunity to speak, any person addressing the Planning Commission may be limited um, time by the um, chairperson, that's me. At all times, please the microphone and state your name and address for the record. We are recording this. So there's anyone who'd like to come comment on any item not on the agenda. Seeing none, I will close the public comment time and go to the approval of minutes, item three. So I Mike wonder, um, on 5C, there's a, uh, just a typo, a small typo on the, under uh, the uh, special use permit for the Elderwood property, and it said, you know, ending time from 11 p.m. to 10 a.m. I think you meant 10 p.m. there. Okay, so we have that correction. You wanna make that motion, John, please? Motion to approve the minutes. Do I have a second, please? Second. Roll call. Motion passed. I guess we really don't need to do a roll call anymore. We don't have that. We do need to do a verbal or. Push the button. Okay. It was passed. Six yes, and we had one absent. So, okay, moving right along, we'll go to 4A, a change of zone, uh, PZC 20-001, and uh, it's a categorical exemption. A proposed change of zone from the A20, exclusive agriculture, a 20 acre minimum, minimum to C3 commercial on a 3.5 acre portion of 9.88 acres. Site is located <coughs> on the west side of Road 68 and Avenue 424 alignment, approximately 0.45 mi miles west of Dinuba Urban Development Boundary. And at this point, Point. I will open the public hearing. We'll start with April Hill. 
our staff presentation. Thank you, and good morning, Chairman Whitlatch and Commissioners. Maple Hill, Planner 3, Resource Management Agency, Economic Development and Planning Branch. As Chairman Whitlatch outlined, the change of zone is from the AE20 to the C3 Service Commercial Zone on a three and a half acre portion of a 9.88 acre parcel with plans to establish a mini mart and gas station. The applicants are Martin and Maria Orozco. The site is located outside in the urban, urban boundary and is subject to the RVLP, the Rural Value Lands Plan. Here's an aerial of the site. Um, surroundings have, uh, there's some businesses to the north, there's some small house, uh, home sites to the, to the east, mostly ag, there's an old sand and gravel pit immediately to the east, RBT. A and April, how old, how old is sand and gravel pit? There's no reclamation project for that? I don't have the history on the site, but it looks pretty, it does. Uh, it's surrounded, it has uh, houses around it, so it's okay. uh, the new housing one and a half miles away and Wheatley housing about the same distance. Our Rural Valley Lands Plan analysis was to prepare to determine the agricultural viability of the site and staff concluded that the parcel would receive 14 points and is in the gray area where no clear cut decision is readily apparent. The project is based on an economic development proposal that has gone through the project review committee. The subject property is only nine acres but was placed in the AE20 zone by the 1978 rezoning of the county, similar to surrounding development. The parcel itself was created by a 1907 subdivision and lot lines were adjusted in 2005. The project is not in the Williamson Act, is not inharmonious with the surroundings. Staff considered that only a three acre portion should be rezoned to allow consistency with the spirit of the general plan in order to retain the remainder in agriculture. If amenable, the, this uh, zone change could be reclassified to the less intense C2 uh, general commercial. The site contains agriculture, scattered rural residences, The trips um, for a for Road 64 south of Avenue 424 was measured at 2,900, and to the north of 424 is 6,400. Allway stop was installed in May 2016 at the T intersection of Road 64 and Avenue to 424. Uh, we have approved local mini marts and gas stations with similar um, average annual daily trips on the one on road, one, road 80 at Avenue 384, which had about 6,900 trips. And another through a zone change in near uh, Jones Corner on road 108 at Avenue 152 with 50, 1,500, 1,558 ATT. Here's a site proposed site plan. The applicant proposes having a mini mart just south of Button Willow Ditch. They have been talking with the Alta Irrigation District staff to determine what setbacks they need to uh, protect the ditch. <coughs> Service commercial or a less intense zone such as neighborhood commercial C1 or general commercial C2 which also would also allow a gasoline filling station or grocery store. The applicants live in the central portion of this of the nine acre site. They had kiwi vines on most of it, but the, those vines were not producing. Public notice for the project was mailed to surrounding property owners within 300 feet, also published in the Foothill Kazan Gazette with a 10 day public comment period. We did receive comments last week from the property owner to the north who has a ranch up there, Mr. Crinklaw. Um, I sent him the site plan. I have not heard back from him. Also received comments uh, this week concerned about uh, sales of liquor in a mini mart on that site. <coughs> this ends staff's report.
So before I uh, open the uh, public testimony, I want to see if my fellow commissioners have any questions for April before she sits down. We'll talk to her after we hear the public <coughs> testimony. So anybody have any questions? Maria? I might. I, I'm you want to save it for? I want to save it, yes. Okay, anybody and else? And I also notice we have somebody in the audience who may speak, but I'll ask him questions later if we need to. Okay. April, does uh, Avenue 424 stop there at the yes. intersection? So we're all we've got is a ditch? Yes. What it looks like. Of course, I'm going to ask step back questions and all that. So we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. We'll uh, open the public testimony, and those who are in favor of the project, we'd like to have you come first, if you would. Anybody like to te testify in favor of the project? Anybody who's opposed to the project would like to come forward and testify? Please give your name and address for the, the record, please. All, all the way up to the microphone. You're being recorded. <coughs> My name is Jeff Narigian. Address? Uh, 42342 Road 62. And you live close by or? Directly behind. Okay, thank you. So I have just a lot of questions because I don't know what the details of this is. Are they gonna be selling gas and diesel? Is there going to be? Address me. So. Oh, I'm okay, sorry. So they'll make a list and they'll answer each one of them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So I just want to know: is it gas or diesel or both? How many pumps? Uh, will they sell alcohol? Uh, estimated foot traffic, estimated vehicle traffic, including semi trucks. Will there be turning lanes? Will they be selling hot food? What will be done to prevent loitering? Will there be food trucks or roadside stands? Uh, fuel tanks, how many and what sizes, above or below ground? Anticipated community benefit? Anticipated community change? Anticipated community detriment? Will there be automotive services? Any other hazardous materials on site? How many employees? Hours of operation? Square foot of main building, area of parking lot footprint, signage, size and height, how far back from the road, and there are uh, three other existing gas station mini marts within a fair travel. One is 1.4 miles away, one is two miles away, and one is 2.14 miles away, and being within 40, or just outside the city of Dinuba's urban development boundary of 0.45 miles. I'm just, my concern is that boundary was established for a reason and things like this should be in town, not out in the country. So that's all. Don't go. We're going to have somebody answer those. Okay. April or Aaron? <laughs> is and of that, uh, uh, what is the uh, maximum use of a, a site like this? Um, April could also give us a, the, whatever we put in there for trip generation. Um, <clears throat> but regardless, this was a simple uh, rezone. So there's a lot of questions here that would uh, not necessarily be answered by the rezoning process itself, more of a, a site plan question, but that's not, that's not in front of us right now. So basically, if we vote to change the zoning, uh, they will be entitled by law to build that. But they can't just build anything. They have to meet the standards set by the county. And I'll let April address that more directly. But So maybe you have one more opportunity. OK? Yeah. Go ahead, April. Yes, the, uh, zone change, the proposed zone change would allow a lot of things. The C3 would allow a, um, a service, super service station that would allow um, diesel as well as gas, gasoline. It could include a, a truck repairs. 
auto repairing bakeries um, or many warehouses is what would be what could be allowed on the C3 service commercial. Um, a C3 zone also allows uses in the C2 zone and the C1 zone, general commercial and neighborhood commercial. So we could have an automated car wash, fast food restaurant. The applicant could choose to get a uh, place retail stores or businesses that don't involve manufacturing. Uh, could have a nursery, could have a variety store. A neighborhood, if, if it were rezoned to the neighborhood commercial C1 zone, they could also have a gasoline filling station ex excluding the super service station, which is the repairs. They could have a grocery store, they could put in a liquor store or a dairy product store. The applicant would be able to develop the property to the with any of the uses that are allowed in those zones. As far as the uh, trips, uh, we did go as far as to uh, project what, what could be be out there. And they're generally uh, 12 fueling stations. It would be about 162, so that's 80 in, 80 out. And um, uh, 10 uh, evening peak trips. Um, <clears throat> So then, sorry, that's uh, average week, yeah, weekday. So it's morning and evening. And then as far as the um, <coughs> uh, setbacks, there's a 50-foot center line setback. And then the C2 zone itself set back, uh, is that 10? I believe it's 10 feet, 10, 10, 10 yeah. feet yeah. 10 from the back. property line. Yeah. <coughs> So I'm sure we didn't answer everything, but uh, we're going to talk about it much more after I close the uh, um, public testimony. So, but thank you. So we're listening, okay? Thank you. Anyone else would like to come forward and testify at this time? <coughs> Good morning. My name's Bob Crinklaw. I'm the property owner just north of this proposed site. Uh, all along uh, the ditch there that runs from Button Willow through to Road 62. Uh, <clears throat> I have considerable concerns, not only from an agricultural point of view, but I also have a rental unit right down at the corner there. At the, it'd be the west end uh, of the proposed site, right across the canal from it, just on the north side. That's of concern to me, it's a, as I have young families in there. The other thing is, is uh, I'm, I, and I, some of the questions have already been answered for me. I appreciate that, for, for example, what C3 includes, because I am concerned about what else could be built across the right adjacent to my property. Uh, <coughs> I. I'm all for free, free enterprise, but I also concerned about agriculture. And every acre that we lose in agriculture, as you know, we're probably gonna get that food source from some other country. So I am concerned that we continue to lose agricultural <coughs> property. I have a question as to why <coughs> all 660 feet of that property would be required for this proposed service station. <coughs> That means that there's a large, if you put the map back up of the proposed site, uh, yeah, from approximately halfway where the building is back, another 330 feet would be removed and put in the commercial zone also. Uh, I would like to see that kept from that building forward, and I would not have particular concern then because that would protect my rental unit and it would also preserve approximately another acre or so of agricultural farmland. So is your uh, rental house, it's on that uh, north uh, west corner uh, on the other side of the ditch? Yes. Okay. Is there a bridge or Wait something? Wait a minute, nor north north northeast. 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 North, I was thinking northwest, but. Uh, oh, say, I'm sorry, say the question again, please. Well, I'm trying to figure, I thought your property is on, is next to the ditch. Yes. Or am I looking at the wrong corner? Right there. Okay. No, my property's on the north side of the ditch running from Button Willow to Road 62. So how do the people 
with that ditch there, Kit, is there a road? That's all ditch, right? Or is there a road also? No, that's all ditch. There's uh, ditch roads on each <coughs> side uh, for the ditch access people, but there's no no paved road between the two, between road 62 and 64. So how do people get back to, they have to go back to road 62? Yes, they go up 62 and, and come in my long driveway to, to my residence and then to the mobile home, which is just uh, south of there. So you own both parcels then? Pardon? You own both parcels? You own, own the L-shaped parcel? And yes, the, yes, that's correct. Okay. 15, approximately 15 acres. There's a five acre parcel in the front there. Okay. Those are, those, those are my two primary concerns. The one is, uh, you know, we're in agriculture. We do have to protect our crops. We have to spray. We have to fertilizer. We have to do all the things that are required to get a crop. And I have no idea what's going to wind up across the canal from us. And eventually you can <coughs> shut me down from doing any of those activities because of hazard to other people adjacent to it. He could presumably put in a truck parking lot behind that area. That means in the summertime, those big diesels will be sitting out there idling all night long, keep, their, keep themselves cool. I have a residence right straight across the canal from that, very close to it. Uh, it could be light pollution because of having to light the area. I can see all kinds of things that could create a, a problem there make it difficult for us to continue to provide our activity, our farm uh, activity. You farm that L-shape? Uh, yes, vehicle? yes. So what, what do you farm? What, what kind of crop? Grapes. Pardon? Grapes. Grapes. Oh, grapes, right. At present, yeah. Has been tree fruit in the past, but it's all grapes, right, at the present time. And then the northeast little parcel, that's the housing that you have there? I'm sorry. The, the northeast corner of 62, but well, that's where you have the housing, the rental. Is, is that right? Right there. No, it's at the on my property. It would be the there southwest. Uh, 029, ending in 029. That's that. his house, I think. That's housing, right? That's his house, but the other house is on the. Is on the res the, the rent rental there. The rental units right on the canal, right at the edge of the canal, in that oh. corner, at the corner. Got it. My home is due north. Shape. Yes. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? No, I think those are my two primary concerns: agriculture and uh, you know uh, you what could be built there. One question: um, You mentioned the welfare of the people there. Uh, how would this affect them as far as their welfare? Well, as I mentioned, if in, for example, if you make, depends on what they put across from there. You know, if they don't do anything with it, it wouldn't probably bother them at all. They could continue to enjoy a, the lifestyle they, they wanted when they rented the property, which was strictly agriculture. The other thing is, is the, uh, who knows what they'll put there, you know? It, it, it could be just nothing but a parking lot with light pollution that would be a problem. Uh, it is, could be the sound of diesel trucks going in and out, <coughs> excuse me, all night long. I, I you know, and I, but I have no idea what they're going to use that back half for. This is why I say I could live with the fact that he has a service station, but why not keep it back to where his building is and let the, the other half, the other 330 feet roughly, 300 feet, uh, remain in agriculture. Those are my, my questions, concerns. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Mark Lemus with Alta Irrigation District at 289 North Allen, Dinuba. Um, just who, to be clear, Alta Irrigation, Alta Irrigation District. District, yep, we who have has, the connect. Who has it now? He used to be on our board. Oh yeah, uh, Chad Wegley's the general manager now. Chris, but Chris is retired then? He retired, yes. Okay. 
Um, we have the ditch running along there. And then one thing in the uh, staff report, that old sand and gravel pit is actually owned by us and it's a ponding basin that we use to recharge water, um, which is ever more important with Sigma now. But um, we just, we've sent two comment letters. We wanna make sure the developer, you know, we're not in favor or against this, we're neutral on the zone change, but uh, make sure that the developer understands that that ditch, as per our policy, because of public safety, will have to be piped at their expense, and I'm not too sure that they understand what that um, expense involves, and um, I encourage them to work with our staff um, in, in the very beginning of their uh, planning process so that we can go over that with them. Um, I know there are some people in the audience that have had to um, work with our staff on piping projects that can attest to that it is not a cheap thing. So they need to understand that what's going to happen. What's piping? What? So that, that um, ditch will have to be taken out and put into concrete pipe because of the public safety. Say that again. Ditch. I couldn't, I couldn't hear. What did you say? Ditch will have to be um, enclosed in concrete pipe and taken out because of public safety. Got it. Yep. Thank you. At, at this property owner's expense? Yes, at the developer's expense. Does that work? Uh, yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, you have new testimony? Can I just ask a question to that? No, the answer is just us. Okay. So, well, I will answer it for you via our staff. Okay. Come up to the microphone, give your name and address. So on Jeff Nerigian again, on that piping, this is just more of a curiosity. Is that for safety as far as drowning or environmental safety? I don't know. Well, it's, uh, through the chair, it's generally for uh, per personal safety. So it'd be um, a drowning issue then? Uh, yes. Would that be the whole length of the 660 or how far would they have to go yes, back? Yes, that whole, whole way. So it, if they require it, then yes. Okay. Do fencing? Uh, it's uh, up to the uh, irrigation district as far as the uh, requirements <coughs> that they have. And they just said pipe. So. Mm -hmm. And then the other things I just wanted to add to, I guess, my opposition to it is uh, I farm and we do quite a bit of commercial work for other growers as well. So we're, I'm around the countryside quite a bit. And I have customers that have ranches that are neighboring to or surrounding country gas stations and stores. And typically, they cannot leave things out overnight. Uh, I have one in particular, uh, his loading yard, we do his trucking. His loading yard is about a quarter mile from a, a store on Conejo and McCall in Fresno County. And every night, all the tractors, the forklifts, they all have to be moved because in the after work hours, there's lots of loitering and drinking behind the store and they wander over to his yard and they steal the batteries and things like that out of the tractors. And uh, so those are my bigger concerns is the <clears throat> not actually having it a gas station on 64, it's just, what comes along with that. And a gas station in town, typically the problems aren't there because you've got city police frequently driving by and there's a lot more, I guess you could say, eyes on things. And out in the country, you might see a sheriff drive by once or twice a day. So there's just a typical more riffraff and loitering and trash and things like that that get left behind in a country store versus a city store. And I, I just feel this particular uh, type of business is suited for town, not for the country, uh, because of the, the change in the amount of people and the uh, activities that go along with that store. That's, that's my biggest concern. Uh, being, you know, I operate my farm directly east of it, our shops there, all of our equipment's parked there. In fact, our equipment parks directly back to the back of that uh, west boundary where he's proposing to, to have the, the end of his store. So, so all that's visible to people to come and peruse and take what they feel. 
So that's, uh, just wanted to add that to, to my Thank comment. Thank you, we heard you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. So that, uh, as there's no further, yes, you wanna say something? Anything new, okay? Yes. Okay. Sandra Statz, 13837 South Zedeker, Kingsburg, California. I won't, I won't say the same thing, though I would like to make a comment in regards to a comment stated that it was not the site plan review and it was a simple uh, zone change. Zone change is not simple. If you approve this, that'll allow that use, which is one of your largest use and global um, allowances on C3. I realize there's a consideration of dropping it, but you're still giving them the entitlement to move forward. And I want you to consider that and everything, everything that's been said today. Thank you. I understand you. that, but thank you for your comment. Is there any other, oh, okay. My name is Scott Harness, 653 North Hayes, Dinuba, uh, former mayor of Dinuba. And just a couple of points, I'm not for or against the project, but I also did work in the convenience store industry for all of my life, from family to a corporate that ran 52, a chain of 52 stations. And what a uh, gentleman in the audience had state is there is quite a bit of uh, activity that comes with these businesses and who uh, the impact it will have on your public safety and uh, if the county is able to service that. And really recently in the last four years, I guess, since the uh, Assembly Bills 109, Prop 47, Prop 57, where uh, it's a lot easier to uh, steal from uh, convenience stores. I can see, uh, just like the city of Dinuba has a, a police officer at Walmart nearly all day, every day, you will have uh, that, you could possibly have that impact out here. It's also a, um, I can't remember what it's called, Maria, if it's Reedley Highway or what we call that shortcut to, from Dinuba to Reedley. And uh, if perhaps you could, um, oh, I don't know if you can, uh, put conditions on the developer for widening the road or improvements to that road, uh, because as you get further into Dinuba, you've got uh, the, the narrow bridge and you have a um, rail crossing that we've already, the city worked with the county on that is a, uh, that wreaks havoc on that area because the train will stop uh, for, uh, I wanna say hours at a time and traffic flow stops. Uh, there is a Sinclair, that is coming into town on the corner, uh, northeast corner of Avenue 416 and Road 70, uh, Inglehart, Road 72, in Dinuba as well. And so that was just a little bit of information I wanted to share. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Scott, um, can I ask a question? No, 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 you can't. <laughs> Go ahead. So, um, given your experience in the area um, uh -huh. and, you know, from business standpoint and, and your past <clears throat> experience as a city, I wanted to ask, and I'm glad you got up because I was going to ask you anyway, um, what kind of impact would this have on the area business-wise? There is, I don't see the business around it that will be impacted. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a convenience store to the north and south that's going to protest it. But if you rezone it, then it's their right to build whatever they want. I guess the other concern would be the precedent that is set with the rezone and um, the value that will go up. As a realtor, ag land is very valuable, but now with uh, a convenience store, you might have neighbors who want to um, jump in on that. And I don't know how you will stop that once you rezone one. Uh, the other thing I did was going to bring up as a realtor, uh, I struggle with the ordinance passed by the Board of Supervisors that a section cannot be cut out of a piece of property that's no less than 40 acres. And uh, I would, uh, curious how this one's able to chop off three acres from a 10. I've had uh, folks that own 20 acres and they, they can sell the 20 real easy of citrus, but nobody, the big farmers don't really want the home. And so they've come to me and asked how to split off an acre to sell the home separately. And uh, I have not been able to find a way to do that for folks. And if there is a way, then, um, you know, that maybe 
maybe I could find out from staff later on how that, how that works. Um, but no impact, uh, Ms. McElroy, um, not a negative impact on business. It is an impact if there was housing around it. You're too far away from uh, Vizcaya, Dainuba, uh, but um, yeah, I, you know, I worked in a C store seven days a week, and uh, we, it tends to be a beacon for, for, for trouble at times. Uh, you can buy alcohol at Rite Aids and Walmarts, but our industry just sometimes has a bad rap, and, um, and like I said, with the new laws, uh, you can watch the news every night, and then someone's just busting through the windows, uh, stealing what they can. Um, armed robberies have gone up, and uh, so, I love the industry, I, I do. I just um, wanted to share that bit of information. So, thank you. Thank you. Anything else? No? I said no, but that, that's not Maria's, that's uh, no. Pardon? No, we've heard from everybody, but uh, the owner doesn't appear to be here. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, close the public testimony and go to staff recommendation and then we will discuss it. <clears throat> well, uh, through the chair uh, to answer some of the, the questions that have arisen um, on page three of 10 of the uh, staff report or page 19 to you, it does talk about the development standards table, um, rear yard 15 feet, side yards none if not adjacent to the R zone et cetera, height, 35 foot limits. Um, so all those standards are, are in there for you to review. The, um, as far as how we look at a, a rezone in the RVLP, um, w w if we have an application, we are duty bound to, to bring it forward um, for your review and to do an RVLP analysis. So that analysis in and of itself does answer a lot of these questions as far as how harmonious is it with the surrounding neighbors um, because it's commercial, if it was commercial and, or industrial because the surrounding uses are farming, it, it's more harmonious. If this was a residential project because the surrounding uses are farming, it might be less harmonious and that's how we, how we look at it. It's not a very actively farmed piece of property. And to answer the question as to how you parcel off three acres, they're not parceled off. It's just what you call split zoning. Um, so we're just rezoning those three acres. Uh, <clears throat> and that we thought would uh, be a little bit more amenable to uh, you, yourselves uh, than trying to rezone the, the whole property. Um, the property in and of itself uh, does not meet the minimum acreages for use permits or any other type of use. So, I mean, to uh, relegate someone to have to farm the rest of their careers on a less than 10 acre piece of property is a little bit a little bit harder to do, especially when there is a potential economic development opportunity. We did go through the daily trips that pass by this site, which are quite quite a few. So, obviously, the owner of the property sees that opportunity. Um, so that's why they, they brought this project forward. Uh, when we did the PZI process in front of the Board of Supervisors, they obviously allowed us to bring this forward to you because uh, they, they also agreed that there was an, an economic development opportunity here. And uh, again, to, to limit someone to force them to farm on nine acres uh, didn't seem reasonable. Uh, the last thing I would potentially propose to this Planning Commission is that uh, there was uh, potential, I believe, uh, that we could create some standards for this project. Um, we don't really have the uh, right to do so in and of itself, but if the applicant was willing to enter into an agreement, a development agreement with the county, we can't actually put conditions on the project. We're not supposed to put condition zoning. Uh, but we could, uh, through a development agreement, actually uh, condition this project, if that is the, the Planning Commission's uh, choice to do so. What is the reason for the C3 versus, say, C1, if, if that is a, a big difference to the developer? Um, I, I, you know, like any uh, developer, uh, uh, 
ask, ask for the universe and maybe you get the moon. Um, so they're, 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 again, they wanted to see, we wanted to see what it would look like if that changes anything with the RVLP analysis or anything like that. No, it, no, it doesn't. So um, that's why the, uh, the comment in the, stat, or in the uh, agenda that they'd be willing to do something less, uh, in, less intense. So uh, again, if that's the, as you can see, as far as the development standards and what's allowed in the C1 zone, it, it is less intense, uh, or the C2 zone. Um, <clears throat> but the, uh, again, they're just asking, asking for the, the best, most intense commercial zone that they could get. Aaron, um, so if today we are approving this or not approving, whatever that case may be, mm -hmm. um, the next step would be for them to come with a site plan and then show show us what they're looking to do, or they to the to the chair. There is no uh, design review uh, for Tulare County, so as far as site plan, next step would be to come in for building permits. So you you wouldn't see this again. Uh, again, if we were to continue this and look to uh, negotiate conditions uh, that is possible through a development agreement. Um, the applicant's not here today to answer yes or no to that question, so I would suggest continuing it to, to see if they, they can uh, work towards uh, conditions that might uh, help the neighbors. Uh, <clears throat> again, if a rezone is a legislative act. Uh, we have absolute police power to do it. Uh, it fits the RVLP score, so we're almost supposed to do it. But the uh, um, fact is there are neighbors' concerns here in, in lieu of trying to put conditions on a zone right now. I'd be more comfortable uh, doing a development agreement with conditions in there. And we've done this before. Uh, if you remember back to uh, Griggs, uh, Lemon Cove, uh, we put uh, conditions on, on that project um, outside of, with the Farm Bureau, outside of, uh, outside of these chambers to, to make sure that everybody was okay with that. And that was the ozone, which also had, <clears throat> you can do anything in. So that would be one aspect, one way to, to help this project move forward. So from reading, really understand that once we change the zone mm -hmm. uh, by law, whatever it is they could do there, they're entitled and we never see it again. And so I think what Aaron's suggesting is we would bring it back and look at perhaps uh, putting some conditions so we have a little better control uh, on what happens there. And maybe the neighbors will feel a little more comfortable. Um, I, I'm thinking that might be a good idea because um, to bring it back, um, because my concern as you know, sharing some of the concerns expressed by neighbors and by um, others in the audience is that, um, you know, and that's why I was concerned about seeing a site plan because you have houses on three sides and I wouldn't want, you know, light shining in my bedroom window. So I'd, I'd be concerned about stuff like that. Uh, well, right. And um, the, uh, and this would be the way, way to do that, um, to actually get some of our uh, use permit conditions on to the project would be through a, an agreement with the, uh, with the owner. Rule and pass the item. So at this time, uh, so do I... Uh, do I need to make a motion? Is that what I'm, I say? Do I close the public testimony and then we go to making a motion? I thought you closed it. Yeah, the public. Pub I, okay, I did close the public hearing. <laughs> okay. I thought I closed the public, public comment. Testimony. Pardon? Testimony. You close the public mm -hmm. testimony. You're discussing the okay. matter, and then you're open for motion. Okay, then we're open for a motion, Maria. So I, uh, Aaron, correct me if I need to say this different, but I'm making a motion to postpone to a date uncertain? To a date uncertain. Okay, so I'm making a motion to postpone to a date uncertain. I'll second. Waiting, waiting. Uh, motion carried. Okay. So there will be no um, notice on this. I no, don't know. No, that there, there will be. Oh, there will be new notice. So <laughs> still call 
and pay attention. Because a lot of times people go, yeah. oh, we didn't get the notice and we can't control the U.S. mail. So thank you for coming and moving right along. Uh, through the chair, um, I would like to uh, state for the record that uh, Fruition Sales has uh, withdrawn their application for special use permit number PSP 20-005. And uh, uh, with that, it uh, doesn't require a motion. Uh, they've withdrawn the application. Well, that was easy. That's, oh, that's why we didn't get it. Uh, also, through the chair, I would like to offer anybody in the audience who wants to make any testimony, since uh, we, we do like to entertain all testimony for projects. If anybody is here to testify as to that uh, use permit, that they are uh, welcome to do so. Anybody like to testify on this? If not, uh, we'll move on to the uh, director's report. Uh, through the chair, uh, Aaron Bach, uh, Planning Director, Tulare County Resource Management Agency. Uh, uh, we are off to the Planning Director's Conference in Sacramento, uh, starting at 1 o'clock today and uh, going through Friday. We will uh, hear about uh, vehicle miles traveled. We will hear about uh, uh, um, Resiliency in regards to wildfires, which we just uh, got our uh, application in yesterday to the board uh, so that they are going to let us uh, apply for wildfire resiliency planning, to add that to our, our general plan. We also um, <clears throat> will be hearing about uh, hemp versus cannabis, and that's what I'm trying to get out of here, make it up to, to hear what the, the state's saying about that. Um, in uh, LA County. Uh, we're, al we're also going to uh, hear a lot about housing and homelessness. So um, again, uh, just reading the agenda for the uh, discussion points, I think we are in as good of a place as we can be. Uh, we just got our SB2 grant uh, monies uh, last, well, got the um, Contract signed by our board last week, so uh, we, we are we are right there as far as like Prop 84 money for resiliency and adaptation, vehicle miles traveled. We got our scope of work um, uh, nearly completed with uh, VRPA. So I mean, as far as general plan amendments, I think we're we're right there. Um, and of course, our county is continually trying to address the homelessness. Uh, we did a general plan um, element and housing element uh, update to the board uh, last week, and that uh, was required by the state. Um, so I can uh, give you that presentation as well uh, next time, uh, just so you can see what, what I'm talking about in regards to uh, the state mandates and how we're addressing them in our general plan. But I, again, I'm always welcome, and also uh, hearing Mr. Whitlatch, I, I'm trying to schedule Denise to, to come talk about water. Uh, and what we're doing water-wise. Uh, there is new um, mm -hmm. studies coming out. Uh, it's CV Salts, uh, Central Valley Salts program that's going to increase the water quality standards throughout the valley, and that's going to be a big game changer. But uh, when I was at the, uh, and while we can also discuss during that presentation, uh, there was a recent study uh, by uh, economists in regards to Sigma and the effects of Sigma, and it's pretty, uh, it's much more bleak than, than we originally anticipated. So those uh, studies I can make uh, available to you uh, through that presentation, if I can uh, get Denise scheduled uh, here shortly. So I'm thinking when we come back next time, we'll try to, try to get both of those on the agenda. Um, otherwise, I'm going to take off out of here and drive to Sacramento. Can you uh, do a briefing on VMT when you get back? Yes, absolutely. We'll give you any of the materials. Uh, what's that? Come visit you. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll do the the presentation I here. I won't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll do the presentation here. Um, but your your concern, Mr. Millies, is in regards to what the cities are going to do. Um, you, you know, are the cities coming to this conference? By the way. Uh, no, this is just the planning directors from the county. But uh, honestly, they have their same equivalent. That we also have the California APA conference. VMT has been heavily discussed over the last seven years. 
uh, we, we as planners all all know what it is. Um, and I, but I don't think uh, we anticipated uh, the legislation to move so quickly into actually having to do it uh, by July of this year. Um, you know, especially when it first came out, you know, Caltrans was adamant that we didn't want to do it because everything's based on level of service. But over time, because of the AB 32 and greenhouse gases and climate change, I mean, we're all kind of as planners getting forced into re-looking at the world in a whole new way. Um, so I think there's going to be a lot of uh, road bumps uh, out there and probably some black eyes and some some scrapes uh, for developers. Um, but honestly, I think uh, the devil's in the details in your environmental documents. So uh, getting a good consultant to do your VMT study and show the city the way is the way to do it. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like when AB 32 was first coming through as far as greenhouse gas emissions and or uh, some of the, the flood control legislation back in the day. Um, we, we all seem to have made it through with that. But, uh, you know, as far as uh, just making sure that the city knows what it is and getting a good consultant to tell them what it is would probably be the most appropriate way to you, move. You, but we'll come back with whatever information we can bring. We were talking through. about homelessness. That's part, one of the items on the agenda, how, how to deal with you know, we had a lot of, uh, in this last campaign, these uh, Board of Supervisor run, uh, races, of course, talked about, uh, you know, you don't have a plan, all you do is study it, and then somebody else said, well, they've got a plan. How much of an impact does homelessness, and, and I'm going to be probably a dumb statement, uh, in the county, how much of a, of a homelessness problem is it in the county? Because everything I see is in the incorporated areas of the city. So... How's the, what, what, what's the county going to do to shepherd this thing to some kind of a meaningful uh, solution? Well, I think the county uh, through HH. I mean, you, saw, you don't see homeless people running around out in the county. I don't. Uh, you, you, you with do. their shopping carts. It, it, well, even at uh, RMA, we see people walking along the ditches. Uh, we've okay, got homeless, so there are homeless, some homeless, homeless folks out there. Not, none recently, actually, that I've seen, but um, the, the fact is that we are coordinating with the cities to a very high degree and looking how we can jointly solve this problem. Uh, HHSA has been heavily involved in the process with uh, Supervisor Shucklin, and there's a committee that looks at this, and they do have a, a plan. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's moving forward. Uh, is it a solution? Um, I don't think anybody's going to say there's a magic solution out there for, for the problem, but I think uh, the county is doing and act, actively trying to get funds to, to really move forward on projects. There's a lot of discussion about, and I've been following this very closely, about the, the, the cause and effect, and, and uh, one of the causes is uh, lack of housing uh, and, and affordable housing, and I don't see it that way, and a lot of others don't either, uh, that it's more of a mental health and public safety issue um, housing is important and you know there aren't enough like I just saw a thing in the Bay Area where there's uh, what you can get for $3,900 a month in Oakland uh, in an apartment or, or $2,800 in uh, Palo Alto whole different story there and it, it's not because those people can't afford $3,900 it's because they don't know <laughs> how to live and, and so there's two different things going on here well, right, and like I said, uh, and it, there's been uh, several presentations recently at the board in regards to, to homelessness, and uh, to that point, there is differing reasons for it, and so there's no one solution that's going to fix it all, but I, I think, uh, um, but, and I don't know if the state legislature can fix it. I think the solutions are local, and it's going to be nonprofits, and it's going to be health and human services, and it's going to be... Board of Supervisors working with city councils to try to, to look to solutions. I mean, this is not uh, the first time in history that homelessness has been a concern. It's always been a concern, but I think it's just become so relevant because of all the homelessness in the, in the bigger cities. All right. So let's get Aaron out of here. If there's no other comments. Thank you. From anyone, we'll uh, adjourn the meeting.
I was going to say I have 10 questions. Were you rushing? Just Were kidding. Were you trying to rush me out of here? <laughs> meeting adjourned. Were you trying to rush me out of here? No, Aaron has to get to a meeting in Sacramento. Poor guy.